team player's job and there uh, fan just on the inside just uh, not using his eyes but his camera which is a strange thing to do uh, as he's as he's here for real why not just enjoy it uh, there is Nibali who's not enjoying things at all I'm afraid had a puncture at a disastrous time at the bottom of the climb just before he engaged it uh, these guys have gone up there and Quintana comes back and he looks at Froome he has a very very big look and I wonder whether he's going to go again he's that's two attacks he's tried so far Sean they haven't worked and he's running out of kilometers 11.4 left well I think uh, we can see Chris Froome here is just backing off a bit world pools uh, look uh, you know, extremely strong because he went with Quintana and went away actually from Richie Port and um, the yellow jersey of Chris Froome. Again, we'll wait and see now. Will uh, he put in another big dig from the uh, young jersey uh, carrier here? Uh, it's going to it's going to keep on going. That is guaranteed. But uh, for the moment, he's not putting Sky under any difficulty with the two very very strong teammates with Chris Froome. Genies is out front. He's looking in a comfortable place. Genies is there. Where is uh, Ryder Ejidal? How is he going to take this one on? That's the big question. He's going to give it his very, very best at the moment. Meanwhile, uh, Sky are trying to make amends, uh, or at least impose themselves, I should say. Uh, I say make amends. It, uh, it's hardly that. But there is uh, Quintana, and he is having, well, a difficult day, Sean. He's tried twice. Will he try again? Well, he will try again, but again, you know, he has a, he's having difficulty with Sky being so strong. Chris Room, the two teammates, they are looking exceptionally strong. That is going to be a, a difficult one. We can see Nibali here just working his way through riders that are getting dropped off the uh, the group of big favours of Yellow Jersey and uh, all back to Cam again. Road Pools just setting a strong pace here and uh, who is going to be the next one to attack? Contador here, of course, also we see. Uh, Micah also on, t on tour here from Tinkoff Saxo. Uh, you have Genies up front, 30 seconds behind. You have Pino and Eschidal behind them. Five pursuers, Anacona, Roland, Plaza Molina, Serpa and Ede. Uh, there's not really much zone of respite within this climb. It's a punishing one all the way up, Sean. It's a question of inclines, and they deal with some severe ones throughout this run. Yes, well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a steep gradient all the way. It does kick up a bit more, but on the, on the easier gradient, if somebody goes in the attack, well, then it's just as difficult as the most steepest section. And we can see here, you know, there's riders and groups all over the place. We can see here uh, Bardet just uh, battling on here uh, with his uh, teammate Villemus just setting a pace and trying to get back. And as we see Pino here just getting back to Heisdal and push, pushing on a bit. And they need to push on. 2.30 at the moment with over 10 kilometres to go. They know Know that they have to, you know, really keep working out. Otherwise, that group of Yellow Jersey, Chris Froome and Nero Quintana, they're going to get maybe caught up in the end. Ejidal comes alongside and uh, Pino says, well, I've got a man up the road. Why on earth am I going to chase here? Francis is your one and two at the moment. If uh, you count Ejidal as number three, he might be number one at the end of the day in terms of the stage. But who is going to win this Tour de France? It looks like Chris Froome at the moment. All questions that have been asked by Nero Quintana have been answered so far, Sean. Yes, well, I think... Uh, very much so and uh, it's not Chris Froome have to do it his teammates are doing all the work at the, at the, for the moment and uh, you know that is a great position to be in if you can just uh, sit on your teammates and allow them to pull back a rider like Nero Quintana who is you know such a good climber it's uh, a real comfort zone for Froome for the moment Nibali what a day um, and what a contrast to be honest to the day he had yesterday a real piece of bad luck, and in fact, uh, he is distanced. He's about 40 seconds down on this group because they've had some real pace. They've been attacking each other, and that's been to the detriment of Nibali, I'm afraid, further down the mountain, Sean. Yes, and uh, of course, we did see Nero Quintana attacking very quickly on the earlier slopes of it. I think a little bit of a tactic there as well because Van Velde, we know he has 1 minute 19 on uh, Nibali, so it gave him an opportunity. He was attacking through him, but it also helps to pull away Van Velde and give Nibali a more difficult difficult ride if he does get back into this group. Uh, no doubt who's going to get the combativity award today. It has to be this man. Genius has been up there for much of the day. He was part of an early breakaway. He's gone for it. Uh, going for it as well is Thibaut Pinot, his teammate, and spinning up a storm. He's had a conversation with Ejidal and said, look, I'm not going to chase on because I'm not going to try and close the gap on my teammate up the road. It seems obvious. All riders know that and it doesn't stop Ejidal asking the question for a little bit of help on this climb.
And as you know, goes for it, he decides I've had enough and he leaves Pino behind. And meanwhile, Valverde, it now is that goes for this. Uh, Valverde, almost certain of third place on this Tour de France because of what's happened to Nibali at the bottom, got himself a rear puncture. So Valverde knows it'll be positions two and three, but this is part of a bid for glory, of course, not for himself, but for the man who wears the white jersey. There he is, Nero Quintana, uh, trying to do the old one-two. And right now, Valverde just trying to tempt Sky into action. Yes, and uh, this is going to be the interesting one again. They will uh, allow Valverde just to ride out in front here, and uh, then we will see Quintana you know, doing the same as we did see on the uh, previous climb, the quad affair, where he uh, just uh, goes across to Valverde and uh, try and work it that way. But uh, we can see there with Sky, very, very solid. World Pools, Richie Port looking you know, extremely strong for the moment. Nibali just using the uh, the motorcycle just dips in behind. He's just about to get back onto the Bardet group. Bardet, of course, wearing the polka dot jersey. Um, hoped for so much today and, and maybe a possibility of uh, carrying the polka dots or indeed wearing that and being awarded it in, uh, in, in Paris. Chris Froome, incidentally, leads the uh, King of the Mountains competition. Right now, out of all the favourites, this man is up the road. It's Valverde you're looking at. He's got a modest margin of just seven seconds. Uh, right Ejidal is having to do a dig very, very deep here. There's only one man ahead of him on the road. It's Geniers. He happens to be the teammate of the man alongside him, Thibaut Pinot. And uh, the Frenchman aren't going to attack. Um, uh, Pinot is not going to attack Geniers up the road. It's going to be down to Ejidal to have to do that duty. Likewise, um, other duties. Nibali, it's one of retrieval. Uh, one for Chris Froome, it's preservation, and for Nero Quintana, it is one of attack, and there he goes, he's gone again, he's got Valverde up the road, and just look at the response from Team Sky, Val Poles has a look behind, sees who else is with him, just checks up the inside, it's Richie Port closest to him, and of course Chris Froome is there as well, Contador has, uh, uh, has come back from what looked like it was going to be a bit of a drift today, and he's very much involved as well, uh, we remind you that Contador started today in fifth place, and it looks like a solid fifth right now, because of the way this is panning out. Quintana has been wound back in again. He'll kick again, will he? He tries to find another rhythm and goes for it again. This is brave effort by Quintana, but at the end of what has been an extraordinarily punishing Tour de France, I'm just wondering if he's got anything left to give on this climb, the ultimate. Well, he has, he's having difficulty just to make a gap uh, from the teammates of Chris Froome, and uh, that is always difficult when you see World Pools just riding away there and pulling back, and we can see you know, Valverde continuing up here in front, but uh, Alberto Contador getting into difficulty, but Quintana, again, he just throws in another punch. He throws in another punch, he sails around this left-hander and just uh, momentarily uh, goes out of view of the chasers from Sky. Well, Paul's first to take a look up and see what the gap is, and right now it's about 8 10 and 12 bike lengths. That's a good kick. Very good kick. Oh, and suddenly another kick as well. It's Timo Pino kicking standing right at Ejidal's face. He's gone up the road. Ejidal starts to fade. It's Geniez and uh, Timo Pino as well. Could it be a glorious day for France at the very last here? Minute and 46 back to Valverde, by the way, from the man up the road. That's Geniez who uh, leads the day's stage. But it's the gap between Quintana and Froome that's the one of most concern. Nobody said this was an easy task, but they've taken it on gleefully today, and Francis Isier might well have their fun, John. Well, I think uh, they have to you know, push on here, and Pino knows that uh, he has to get out of this group or push on as much as possible. Heijdal was walking away from and that's the way rider Heijdal climb. You know, he's steady, just a really strong pace. Pino just puts in a big punch here, gets up to Ginez, and he's pushing on now, trying to pull him away, but they need to do that because the race is coming up from behind. It's all very well sending Valverde up the road, but when you get there, he can offer you no more assistance, and it's Quintana that's gone to the front. Same thing happened on the Quella Fair. Same thing's happening on Altuez. We're not quite up to Dutch Corner just yet. In fact, we've got some time to go. 8.6 kilometres left of today. Quintana then, there he is. He checks back over his shoulder and he sees what he doesn't want to see, and it's a yellow jersey, Sean, not that far away. Well, I think uh, he sees that Chris Froome is in a bit of difficulty because uh, he hasn't wrecked it at all, Froome, but of course he had two teammates who were controlling the situation. Will they be able to just keep on walking away and pull 
pull back Nero Quintana once more but I think Chris Froome is a little bit in difficulty otherwise he might try and you know react himself when Quintana goes if he was as he's been in the past in this race immediately reacting and in the wheel of Quintana immediately it's Francis Ujua one and two on the road today in this stage and uh, Ryder Ejidal has just kept his rhythm and got back to these guys here is Quintana and Valverde they are second and third the older that they are on the road at the moment uh, second and third amongst the, the big names I should say overall we remind you Quintana started the day two minutes and 38 down what's the gap Sean and let's not forget uh, Valverde Quintana has a, a teammate up the road uh, winner and corner he was in this group so they will be coming to him pretty quickly and that will be very important if winner and corner is in good shape well then he can push on Serpa here as well we've seen uh, the Colombian rider uh, on the earlier part on the quad affair he did push on as well with uh, um, uh, with the white jersey and uh, he's doing it once again here just counting now back between Quintana and uh, Froome and in fact it's a goodly margin it's starting to eat out uh, by my reckoning it's about 20 seconds at the moment so work to be done by Team Sky what resources have they got to bring right now to this battle and what has Chris Froome got when he is ultimately isolated and on his own later on we can only wait and see so Colombians helping each other, sort of uh, cross-team national assistance, I think it's possibly fair to say. Uh, but you'd have to prove that in court, I think. And would anyone begrudge Quintana a little bit of help by a fellow Colombian? We'll see. Uh, it's all part of the race today, that is for sure. And there, oh, poor Genies goes backwards. What a great ride by him today. I think he'll be wearing the red combativity number tomorrow. Uh, we'll find out who is going to win the ultimate prize. Quite often they declare that at the top of the final day to the Champs-Élysées we will see there is Valverde it's down to Quintana the camera swings round and we see the white jersey and indeed he's with his other teammate who was from the breakaway great work this is winner Alicona and uh, still looks like he's offering something because Quintana hasn't gone by him yet. Still waiting for that official declaration of the gap between Quintana and Froome. Transponders not functioning properly up the mountains here. We thought it was about 20 seconds. Has it expanded though, Sean? Well, it is expanding. We can see that. And uh, with 7.7 .7 to go, it's a long, long way to the top of this one. So, uh, yes, Sky have the job to do to keep on setting a pace that is good enough to limit uh, the time gained by Nero Quintana. But again you have to remember how good is Chris Froome is he starting to suffer a bit so you have to make that calculation as well we can see there that Chris Froome is losing a little bit on his teammates I think Chris Froome is starting to suffer and this is early on the climb to be suffering it is very early on the climb to be suffering and 7.6 kilometers to go it doesn't sound like an awful lot but the worst part of this climb is still to come and in fact uh, the worst section of uh, the midsection I should say this one of the steeper sections these guys are just sailing over right now sailing clawing their way up this mountain that's for sure but look at the way Quintana is eating in that's Roland ahead of him and I suspect they may well just sail by these guys Roland will do his best I think to tag onto them takes a big uh, uh, swig of water What's he got to offer? Let's see. Is he absolutely burnt out? We're going to find out right now. And it's a suggestion almost of what anyone else has got left because Roland is a decent climber indeed. Not as good as Quintana, clearly. And Quintana out of the saddle. And still, he tries to issue yet more blows to Froome, who's further back down the mountain. Here he is with two teammates with him. Is it enough? Aginal decides to push on for glory today and I think he may well be in for a stage win. He's a very capable rider in situations such as this. Then again, it might well be Quintana. And don't forget, bonus seconds up for grabs at the line. That could be crucial, Sean, in, in the scheme of things as well. Yes, well, it looks like the winner is going to come from maybe Quintana. I think he's the one who's eaten into the advantage here of our men out in front, Aginal and Thibaut Minot. Uh, 20 seconds I was hearing there just some moments ago over race radio for Chris Froome down on Nero Quintana. 20 seconds, 2 minutes and 39 is what Quintana needs to win this Tour de France. So it's a massive ask, it's a massive crowd, it's a massive moment on this Tour de France. And, well, Quintana is giving it a good go. Is it all too late? We're going to find out. Sky damage limitation for them at the moment yes it is all about damage limitation and uh, they're doing it quite well working away at the two riders uh, Wout Pools and Richie Port working well together we can see here the group of Nibali um, Bolka Malema and Adam Yates who is doing a really good performance because he is up in some serious company here 
26 or so seconds now between Quintana and uh, and the yellow jersey of Chris Froome. He's got to find more time. He needs two more minutes on this mountain. He's got 6.9 kilometres to do it. Yes, well, I think it's going to be always difficult, even going at the very earlier uh, point on outdoors making the uh, the calculation the time you have to make up it would be always difficult but again we have to wait and see how uh, sky managed the situation here chris Froome, you know he's working away at it it's looking that it's going to be difficult but again there's almost seven kilometers to, a little under seven kilometers to go well, the vehicles that you see parked up here have been here for an entire week. Uh, that was the cutoff point to allow vehicles up the mountain. These guys, they've been climbing all, all over France, climbing, sprinting, time trialing, and finally we come to Alp d'Huez. What an amazing crucible in a certain way for these guys to be put within. Absolutely white hot the action, despite the fact that the pace is slow because of the incline we're dealing with and in fact uh, more than 10%, uh, 10 and 12s along the way and it's been too much for some, certainly too much for Bardet and I'm afraid it's bye bye polka dots for him. Yes, I think it's, uh, and for the man just in front of him uh, the Katusha rider uh, Purito Rodriguez also in uh, in the uh, mountain classification but unfortunately today uh, the way the race have been going uh, it looks like that uh, Chris Froome is the one because he is going to finish up. If he keeps on going in the position he's in, well, then he's going to take more points in that uh, mountain classification. And, of course, the other two men who will challenge him are further down the mountain. Well, there you are. A diminutive character is Quintana, but he's a big powerhouse and a, a leprechaunic uh, fan as well to the side of the road, uh, just bouncing along and offering up uh, a heartfelt encouragement. And here comes Ejidal, and they're coming into Dutch corner. You can see the orange. There's not many mountains in Holland, but they own one here in France, it seems, and they are underway. They've been waiting for this all week, and the first man that they see is Ryan Ejidal. Yes, although we can see uh, that's, you know, out front, uh, it's Thibaut Pernod is just a little bit up ahead of Eichdahl here. So it's a big battle here with the two leaders on the road. But uh, I think they're very concerned with what's happening behind. They're being made aware that the uh, group coming up behind Quintana is coming up very quickly, as we can see here. He's coming across to Ginez. He is. Uh, Ginez is about to catch. Uh, it, uh, unfortunately, so sorry for that. Uh, Pino masked by a, a naked outrunner. Here he is. He's out front. And it is in fact, that uh, it's Ejidal that's been left in his wake. Uh, likewise, Froome from Quintana, but it's a question of margin. Here we go through the absolute uh, madness of Dutch Corner right now. They have been here all week. They are tanked up and ready to give vent and applause to everybody who's coming up here. But the tanks of the riders are empty, Sean. And what about Sean? what about Team Sky? And what about Froome? These are questions we're going to answer in the next 6K. Yes, and uh, it's important that Chris Froome have two teams is just to lead them through here as we can see they're working very well together all the time losing uh, a little bit slowly but it's not growing out of anything uh, of uh, an emergency at the moment but uh, we're still just under seven kilometers to go seven kilometers to go they come through this uh, amazing party a great festival of cycling appreciation i think it's fair to say and uh, thank goodness that they've kept themselves sensible i think a lot of warnings have gone out uh, the police have been down here as well and said look respect them and they're giving them space here Sean yes well for the moment they're giving them space but we can see here just a, uh, a spectator running along this is where dangerous because with uh, Valverde so close to that spectator if he you know gets gets pushed over he could go down in front of him and that would be a disaster for uh, Valverde but again we can see here that uh, the sky men leading up at the moment and uh, it's a big battle out front between the two leaders we see Thibaut Pinot here the Frenchman from Francaise de Joux and also Ryder Heijdal from Canada Garmin which is just a little bit further down here. My goodness, uh, it's just the rhythmic movement that pick out, of course, the riders from the crowd. There's virtually no distance. At elite sport level, you can get no closer to your heroes, so respect them, I think, is the order of the day. Yes, well, that's what you would be hoping, but again, you know, people are waiting here. Uh, they see their you know, big heroes coming through, and uh, it's uh, sometimes difficult to get just over-anxious, and that's when we can see uh, sometimes problems. For the moment, all going well, and we are getting closer to the barrier off section, and when we get to that, I think the riders will be relieved that a bit more safe to get through. Well, you can't barrier the whole uh, uh, mountain, and you wouldn't want to. Alp Duez has its own charm, its old drama. Uh, they say it's the nearest thing you get to stadium cycling out in the Alps. 
Champions. And you can understand the atmosphere is absolutely electric. Right now, uh, Chris Froome needs some kind of extra power. He's got to find it because up the mountain is Quintana. And look at the margin, Sean. Yes, well, it is growing out, as we can see here. Quintana at 58 seconds and... Uh... Chris Froome at 1.28 at the moment, and we can see here that you know everybody is just walking at it and you know giving it their 100%, and uh, certainly the Sky are doing that and they're doing a great job. Uh, the two men for uh, Chris Froome are you know excellent. Uh, if they can keep on working as they have been for the last number of kilometres, well that will be the saving of Chris Froome, and, and uh, the yellow jersey should be secure. But again, we have to see Quintana where he is, and he's going to you know continue on. How fast can he go? That is the question. Five kilometres to go. It's going to be another stage victory by the looks of things, unless Quintana can get back at Thibaut Pinot. He's a minute down with five kilometres to go. I'm wondering whether that's enough, because Quintana's got no choice other than to really push on, and he's doing it, Sean. Yes, well, it's uh, Winner and Corner who's doing all the pushing. He's doing a, uh, an unbelievable performance up front as well with uh, Quintana, because he's been on the front there with Quintana on tow. Again, how long will he uh, last out there? And I think that minute for Thibaut out front is going to be very, very difficult, because when Quintana has to take it up on his own, he will eat into that minute advantage very quickly. Chris Froome is there. Uh, you saw that Pierre Roland is also there. Uh, the gap between Froome and Quintana at the moment is about 30, 32 seconds uh, in that sort of order. Uh, it's infrequent, the time gap that we're getting. Uh, but it's holding at least just beyond the 30-second mark. And don't forget the gap at the top of the day between Froome and Quintana is 2 minutes and 38. Is that too much of an ask? I believe it is. I think Chris Froome will be crowned champion at the end of today, but nothing can be certain until we get these 4.6 kilometres out of the way. And a little bit more, of course, for those further down the mountain. You're looking at Chris Froome right now. He's still got teammate, a teammate with him uh, there as well. Quintana strikes out. He's burned all his personnel, and now he's going to scorch up this mountain. Yes, sir. And he's scorching up there. And we can see, you know, the Colombian supporters. He just goes in the attack. He knows that winner and corner is starting to slow, starting to tire. And uh, he has to just, you know, go from a long ways out. He's already, you know, taking it up very early. But, uh, you know, this is where he can make up time. And we can see here, impressive the way he's going uphill. Absolutely fantastic climber in action. Uh, a man who started off for many as a favourite for this Tour de France. It looks like it's going to be second place. But nothing is decided yet. Chris Froome wrestling with all his emotions. He's had to deal with an awful lot. He's carried a lot on his shoulders, and not just that jersey, let's not forget. Almost a burden of success. Uh, it's not been liked. It's not been appreciated in certain quarters. Uh, many, though, do. And right now, Froome is into the last few curves of Alp Duez. 4.2 kilometres uh, remain of today for the man up the road. That's Thibaut Pinot. Uh, Pinot is up there. Ejidal is there. And Quintana is 48 seconds back. Quintana is greedy for bonus seconds as well, Sean, if he can find those 48 seconds to Pinot, and I suspect that's the easiest task he's going to have today uh, of the many, then he gets a 10-second bonus at the line as well, which could prove crucial. Yes, well, it's, it's the second bonus will, every second will be crucial here, and we can see here, you know, he's just giving it everything, still over four kilometres to go, and it's a four kilometre that just goes on forever. On the Alp, you know, when you have uh, four kilometres, the kilometres come down so slowly, it's just unbelievable, and we can see Quintana also starting to look like he's so Suffering here, not surprising the way they have been tackling this climb up to Alto Ace. And uh, now it's a question of if Chris Froome can keep on working. He's lost World Pools, of course, and is Richie Port, the Australian rider who is securing a real strong pace at the moment, looking good, but they have to continue on for another four kilometres. Timo Pinot still grinds. He's into the barrier section right now, and 3.9 kilometres from home. He's almost into the easier area right now, and he's looking at the camera. He wants to know what the gap is. I think his radio's been pulled out of his ear. He didn't want anyone shouting at him. It is indeed. The earpiece is dangling down by his chin. What's the gap, he says? How much chance have I got of taking a stage victory and saving this race for myself, essentially? Well, Quintana's on his case, but uh, how far back is he? 44 seconds. He hasn't found uh, Ejidal just yet. 40 seconds now declared back to Pinot. And the gap between Quintana and Froome is heading for the minute mark, Sean. Yes, well, it is uh, growing out slowly and it's going to continue on uh, all the way to the finish line. But will uh, it be enough? It's not looking like that it's going to be. But again, you know, in four kilometers, they can so much happen. 
Quintana can just start the week uh, or he can you know, maybe just continue at this pace if he does and Chris Froome continues on at the same pace well then I don't think he will take over the leadership of this Tour de France but again Chris Froome will he be able to continue on with the pace Richie Porte is setting we can see here you know, he's still following there looking about and when you can look about you're, you're not suffering too much but again we'll have to wait and see well, uh, Chris Froome still being abused uh, by certain sections of the crowd, but uh, he needs to just put that behind him. He did uh, spare himself a, a glance at somebody who'd issued more than just words in his direction, I'm afraid. He's been a brave man, Sean, Chris Froome. Uh, this is a brave performance as well as a gutsy performance and a powerful one by Froome, let's not forget. Uh, and he's still struggling with his own emotions within his own mind. And I'm not surprised. He's carried quite a weight, hasn't he, throughout this tour? Yes, well, he's uh, had a difficult tour and, uh, of course, it does go on. You will always get these people, you know, and uh, we did see there on the roadside there was something said to him. He looked over his left shoulder, but you have to continue on. You have to focus out in front and just concentrate on the racing is uh, alone. It's it difficult to do, but you have to just try, you know, 100% on what's happening up front. Just use your anger. Right now, there's a minute between himself and Quintana. There you see the gap just uh, hovering. Minute, minute and two, minute and one. Uh, he, he's setting that pace. He's doing enough to win this race, uh, despite all of the angst that he has faced. And a great performance. And, of course, let's let's not forget, he has, of course, won a stage, that amazing stage uh, to Pierre Saint-Martin, first stage of the Pyrenees, where, essentially, he really set his stall out for yellow. Solid minute thereabouts between uh, Quintana and uh, uh, the yellow jersey of Chris Froome and it looks like that's the way that may well stay 36 seconds between Quintana and what looks like we're going to have a French winner today Thibaut Pinot three kilometres remaining and it just eases ever so slightly right now I don't think it's going to work for uh, Thibaut Pinot unfortunately Quintana is the one who's coming up and this final three kilometres are a little bit easier in sections but still at this point it just hurts so much after the effort they're making on this uh, plus 13 kilometre climb we can see Quintana there he's just walking away at it and uh, Thibaut Pinot I think he's really starting to suffer uh, I'm concerned for Pinot with this distance from the finish the advantage he got he has got 35 seconds I don't think it's enough well, it's now 36 seconds. It's uh, maybe the toils of this campaign are starting not only to take a toll on Quintana, uh, but Froome, of course, as well. And Froome is now cutting the gap. He's cutting the deficit 58 seconds now. And still, I'm, bound, I'm starting to believe that Pino may well just get this. 35 seconds, Quintana, 2.7 kilometres to go. And this is where the where it eases ever so slight to about 5.5%. He comes up to Ryder Ejidal, the first of his targets up this mountain, essentially. The real target, of course, sits behind him, wearing the yellow jersey, and still a gap between them. A minute, minute and two. It's hovering, Sean, but it's staying. It's not getting beyond that at the moment, at least. No, it's uh, hovering for a little moment now, and uh, you know, around the minute, a minute and two. But uh, I, again, we can see Quintana maybe starting to pay for his efforts he's the one who was riding and on the climb of course drafting is not as anything like on the flatter sections but still it's important that you have a teammate or two mates which Chris, Chris Froome had for a long time he still have Richie Port there Nero Quintana has been on his own for quite a while now but he had also a teammate in the winner rank corner motorcycle almost taking out uh, um, the main challenger for the yellow jersey he'll be struck out for tomorrow on the Champs-Élysées striking up as well up the road here is Quintana his mission now is to get to Pinot he's bridged over to Ejidal and Ejidal fights back on the flatter section here brave effort by the big rangy Canadian and uh, the little guy from Colombia goes for it yet again he wears the young riders leaders jersey this man Thibaut Pinot I still think he can do this he believes as well I'm sure he's got to he's got no choice 28 seconds with 2.3 to go it's going to be close Sean yes it is going to be close and uh, it seems that Thibaut Pinot has got energy from somewhere he's really working out giving it everything and of course a stage on Alpe a Frenchman to win a stage on Alpe what a performance would be and Thibaut Pinot of course he's had a real difficult race but of latter days he's been very aggressive in the break a lot and getting close to winning a stage if he wins this one well it will make the race for himself and the Francaise de Jou team just looking at the clock from Quintana measured up to Pinot uh, Pinot is just striding out again it's back up to 26 seconds it was 24 a few moments ago what reserves has he got uh, Quintana starts to close once more and look at the gap between the yellow jersey and Quintana I think Sky possibly realizing that this is job done for them they came in today with two minutes and 38 seconds they've got to be careful though two kilometers still remaining and and of course, bonus seconds at the line for Quintana. Yes, and uh, 
Taking the bonus seconds into account, still with this, uh, you know, this advantage that Quintana has pulled out over Chris Froome, looking like it's not going to happen. And as we mentioned this morning at the start, uh, you know, the advantage that he had to make up 238 was it was always going to be a huge ask. A huge ask, but he's asked the question of himself and he's tried to deliver an answer. But is it going to be enough as he goes under the two kilometres to go, Banner? And he sits back in the saddle. And look, uh, Pino pulls out an advantage. 27 seconds now. It looks like Pino is going to uh, give the French a victory that maybe just will calm some of the angst that they seem to be feeling, uh, particularly towards Chris Froome on occasion. Here is Chris Froome, though. Largely, there has been applause and support from the main body of the fans here, and we can be grateful for that. 1.7 kilometres to go, and it looks like we are now about to crown Chris Froome. We'll wait till he gets to the line, and Quintana, I think, knows it. He looks back down the mountain, he looks up ahead, and what does he see ahead of him? He sees Pino, and behind him is Froome. Quintana, it is not going to be, I'm afraid, not a stage win either. 27 seconds with 1,500 metres to go. Uh, and now it's where Pino starts to believe and starts to push on. And I'm afraid Quintana wakes up to the fact that he's not going to get a stage win today, I don't think. He's certainly not going to win this Tour de France, Sean. No, it doesn't look like he's going to make the advantage. And... Uh... He's probably made aware, you know, the differences. And again, he's expecting to, you know, close up on the ones that are out in front. I'm sure he realizes that uh, Thibaut Pino is out there because there was a lot of riders in between. So it's difficult. Uh, but, uh, you know, from his director of sport, he's surely getting the information. And we can see here, he's just going to battle all the way to the line. And what a ride by Thibaut Pino because I was looking at, you know, the, the times that... Uh, our chaser here, Nero Quintana, it looked like he was going to swallow him up in the final number of kilometres, but he just you know, got energy from somewhere and looks like he's going to hold on. Well, it's down to 22 seconds. He is failing, and Quintana is now engaging in a sprint. 1,100 metres. There's the Flamme Rouge. Now, Quintana's got no uh, sympathy for the French public as far as this matter is concerned. If he can catch uh, Pinot in the last K, he certainly will, because he wants uh, that 10-second bonus out of the line. I don't think he's going to do it, because the crowd and everyone is willing this man on, and he has got the will to succeed. When his head's in the right place, Thibaut Pinot can conquer, and today it looks like he's going to conquer the Alp. This is the only man who can stop him, Quintana here, coming under the Flamme Rouge with a 21 second margin to the Frenchman, I think it's enough for him Yes, it is enough, I think uh, at this point it does ease off a bit and it goes down uh, when you get inside the final kilometre it starts to go down and then it kicks up the last 400 metres once again with a 21 second advantage, the way Thibaut Pinot was riding in the last number of kilometres it looked like he's going to make it. Richie Port, the ultimate uh, lieutenant it seems has delivered Chris Froome to victory here, he's been part of it there of course is Pierre Roland, can't quite keep up with these guys right now minute and 46 back minute and 46, and so not 20 seconds off that, you can see what the gap is, it's nowhere near, 2 minutes and 38 I'm afraid and so Chris Froome is going to be crowned uh, Tour de France champion but for the French the headlines tomorrow are all going to be about Thibaut Pinot. They're absolutely loving this. The hoardings are being beaten. It's a drumbeat that echoes down the mountain. Everybody else knows that somebody else has won the day. It's a Frenchman. Francis de Jure have taken the day on Alp Duez. And the man that's done it for them is Thibaut Pinot. He's been crestfallen. He's picked himself back up. He's been wounded. He's picked himself back up. He got to the foot of this Alp Duez. And he picked up the mountain. And he grounded to die. Fantastic performance by him. Absolutely superb victory. We cast our minds back. Here he is. Brave effort by Quintana. The emotions rising above, above, above for everybody here. What a great performance it's been by him, Sean. A credit to him in every single way. What a battle. What a battle for the stage victory and what a battle to try and win this too. We see Nero Quintano coming in there just uh, over 20 seconds behind the French stage winner, Thibaut Pinot, who put up you know, a number Libre ride. He pulled something out of the bag with you know, the final two, three kilometres and just held on. And we can see Chris Froome is just working on it uh, to limit the losses. And that's what it's going to be now as we see Heijdel also, you know, a great performance to hold on out ahead of the big battle coming up from behind of the big candidates for this Tour de France. Fantastic performance as we regather ourselves for Ryder Ejidal as well. Well, Chris Froome has had to gather himself and bite his tongue on so many occasions. And he took big bites in the Pyrenees.
trees out of all around him. And he's now taken this Tour de France title. He'll come to the line. He is our champion, a worthy champion as well, I'll be bound. For the second time, Chris Froome has been crowned Tour de France winner. And that, to him, will sound very good indeed. Far better than the sound of uh, the naysayers along the way. He's shut up an awful lot of people out there. And he has delivered not only the yellow jersey, he is our king of the mountains. A king today, I guess, crowned was Pino, but to my mind, Chris Froome is the hero. What an amazing performance by him, by his team, and by everybody associated with him. Chapeau.